Salutations all. Thank you for coming back and seeing us. Sorry we've been away for a while, but uh, here we are, baby. Let's do this. What are we going to do today? Well, uh, we're going to do some flavor-packed pork. I wonder if I could trademark that. Can I? Anyway, yeah, so we're going to do a uh, jerk pork loin. We're going to stuff that with some delicious cream cheese and some spinach and a little bit of love and paranoia. It's going to be awesome. All right, it's gonna be awesome. For you fancy people, we're doing a pork roulade. A roulade is just a really fancy term to roll things up. That's it, that's it. Super, super crazy easy. Uh, we're gonna pair this pork with some rice and peas. For layman, that's uh, rice with beans, um, specifically kidney beans. Rice and peas, kidney beans, rice, all right. Easy peasy. And we're gonna to top it with a delicious mixture of fruits and other things. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. And uh, we're going to shovel it all down with some sautéed vegetables. It's a whole meal that we're doing right now. You ready? Let's go. So as we're getting this adventure, the first thing that we want to go over is what we are going to need for this, right? So obviously we're going to need some pork loin. Um, we're going to get into how we're going to work that in a few moments. And uh, we're going to look at our seasonings first, right? Um, <clears throat> we're going to do a jerk seasoning, right? We did say jerk. Did you hear that? Jerk, Steve Martin. Stay away from those cans. A little jerk seasoning. But I want to talk about the pros and cons of DIY and store-bought. Uh, let me just tell you what goes into jerk seasoning, or at least what goes into mine. <clears throat> I've got some garlic powder, some cayenne, onion powder, thyme, parsley, a little sugar, you can do granulated sugar or brown sugar, salt, paprika, smoked paprika, allspice, black pepper, red pepper flakes, nutmeg, and cinnamon, okay? That is what goes into this deliciousness. Now, sometimes if I'm feeling a little freaky, uh, maybe I'll do a little dried chive, chop that down in there as well, but for the most part, that is what goes in there. Oh, you wanted measurements? Of course you do, of course you do. All right, now listen, I'm gonna just give you a rule quick little thing okay this is not going to make very much but it'll get you started and you can multiply the recipe from there on your garlic powder it's two teaspoons okay on all of these next ingredients it's going to be one and a quarter teaspoons so your cayenne your onion powder your dried thyme your parsley your, that's dried by the way your sugar um, as well as your salt for the next two your uh, paprika and your allspice we're going to do three quarters of a teaspoon. I like a little more, um, especially with my paprika. I like that smokiness of it. And then on the last ingredients, it's a quarter teaspoon. So you got black pepper, red pepper flakes, the nutmeg, and the cinnamon. That's a quarter teaspoon on all that. All right, did you catch all that? All right, so tap two times on the left of the screen. Tap right, your left, not mine, your left. Tap two times, it'll take you back. All right, now, you could just go out and buy jerk seasoning, but let's be honest, that would be the simplest thing. I don't expect everyone to have every every spice in their kitchen, but you should. Um, the, the cons to that, I mean, the pros obviously is convenience, right? The con is gonna be, maybe you like a little more cinnamon, maybe you like a little more this, that, or the other. Maybe you don't really like the spice associated, generally associated with the jerk seasoning. If you do it yourself, then you're in control of all of that, right? You can always add a little more, can't take away. So, stack that pantry up, get some spices, go out there, find something that you don't know what it is, Google it and get it, taste it, put it on something. All right, let's move into the, what I'm gonna call a relish. What are we gonna do here? All right, so this is uh, a little jicama, a little balance there, let's get that white balance. Uh, that's jicama. Most of you, at least in this state, the uh, state of Texas, you're, you know what jicama is, right? You've seen it. Um, if you've never had jicama, somewhere where maybe they don't uh, do a little jicama slaw on your taco. Jicama is like um, an underachieving apple ran into a potato. And they came together and made sensual, passionate plans for their future. They molded together and that's jicama. 
okay? It's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit starchy. I mean, it's jicama, right? All right. Next element of our relish is going to be mango, what I've already diced down. If you're using fresh mango, um, they do make the little mango cutter thingies, kind of like they do for apples. Uh, if you're going at it alone with a knife, just remember that the mango has a very awkwardly shaped seed in it, okay? An awkwardly shaped seed. Of course, you can always buy the stuff in the jar, easy peasy, ready to go, always sweet, right? We're gonna hit it with a little bit of cilantro. You guys know what that looks like. We're gonna throw in a dash of honey. Uh, I'm gonna use this local Texas honey. Bang, baby. All right, local Texas honey. Remember, local honey will help you people with the allergies, okay? And last but not least, the not so star of the show. Bum, bum, bum. What is this, kids? Dragon fruit. You did it. All right. Dragon fruit. It's a crazy looking thing. You can find it pretty much any Asian market that you go to. You will find some dragon fruit. All right. Uh, dragon fruit, I would say, is a cross between a kiwi, a little bit of an apple. Um, I mean, I guess that's about as you know far as I would go with that flavor wise. You can find drinks made with it. Um, I know they do like the boba teas with it, all that jazz. It's a super sexy looking fruit, first of all, super sexy. So reason we say kiwi a lot, I mean the flavor, yes, a little bit, um, but also because of the way that the seeds grow in this thing. Crazy, right? Yeah. All right, so super easy to work with as well. So I cut that in half, obviously, so you could see what it looked like. Uh, if you wanna peel it, crazy easy, right? So we're gonna just run our fingers right along that there part there, and all that comes right off, and then you can do whatever you please with it, rub it on your face, whatever, all right? So we're gonna get all those ingredients mixed into a bowl, right? I'm gonna put just the slightest pinch of salt uh, onto that, because as you know, salt will start to draw out the natural juices, and I want that sauce, the relish, to be really nice on top, right? So I'm gonna get that mixed into a bowl, then we're gonna start talking about this pork. Let's do this. All right, y'all. So what we've got here is uh, a baby pork loin, or a small pork loin. It's actually not a baby pork loin, but a small one. For time, I've already rolled it, but I just wanna show you. So you would basically take your pork loin like that, right? Get you a really nice, good, sharp knife. And the way that I roll mine out is I start at the bottom, boom, 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 right? So I basically start down here, Get me a nice little thin slice there, start peeling it back and pulling and cutting as I go, right? So I'll pull and cut, pull, cut, pull, cut, pull, cut, pull, cut, until I got it as far as I could get it, right? Now, what I did with this one, because it is a little bit smaller, is I then took a little piece of plastic and placed it over the meat here. And I happen to have an Acme mallet from my good friend Wiley. And I use the smooth side to pound the meat out, right? And listen, you don't gotta beat your meat aggressively to accomplish a goal. Write that down. All right, and I start in the middle and I hit and push, hit and push, hit and push. Right, and then I hit it with the other side just to, you know, muck it down a little bit. Wanted to save us a little bit of time and noise, all right? But that's where we got to there for our pork loin. Now, if you don't have a mallet, no big deal. Uh, you can always take your pork and take a knife and stick it right down the middle of that pork loin as far as you can. Run your finger around in there and, uh, and make a nice little opening to get your stuffing in as well to get your filling in there all right so what we're going to do is first we're going to start with a little seasoning on this pork all right so we're going to put a little salt and pepper on the inside parts here yes yeah, so a little salt and pepper not too too much needed easy peasy all right 
right, and then I'm going to go in with my creamy parts of my filling here. Uh, in this, I just put, I mean, obviously cream cheese, right? Uh, an egg. The egg is going to act as a binder so that my delicious cream cheese doesn't just completely melt down and run out of that pork. I put a little bit of garlic. Come on, man. You knew it was coming. You knew. You guys know me. All right, and I put just the incy bincy bit of ginger, all right? A piece of ginger about, I mean, the tip of my pinky there. And I grated that down with my microplane. All right. So you want the pork to be pretty good and dry inside, obviously. Otherwise, your, your cream cheese won't spread off very nicely. You'll be fighting with it. And I made a lot because we actually have two pork loins to do. But, uh... Anywho, all right, now for this, you can use uh, fresh spinach if you please. By all means, you can use fresh spinach. Just remember that fresh spinach cooks down to little of nothing. Uh, even when you're stuffing, you want to put a little more than you think you're going to need in there because it will wilt down, and we want this to be really good and hearty. If you choose to use frozen spinach, as I am here, you want to. Um, press as much of the water out of it as possible. You can take it and put it into a kitchen towel and twist that towel up and really, really wring the bejesus out of it and get that out because we don't want the juices to mess up our filling, right? So remember, the filling is <clears throat> cream cheese, a touch of ginger, a little bit of garlic, and an egg to bind it. All right, we'll take our spinach. Get it nicely spread out there. As even as you can, you know what I mean? Make it easier to roll. I've also got some twine set aside over here. May or may not be needed, honestly. You might be able to get this rolled up and seared off. And it might not even come apart at all, but better safe than sorry. All right. Also make sure if you do use your, if you do go to use the mallet, put plastic down first. Plastic on both sides, it'll just save you a lot of time. And uh, if you're using a wooden cutting board, you don't want it mashed all, all that pork down to that board like that. It'll stick to it. But anyway, all right, once we got our filling in there, just like it says, right? Roll on, baby, roll on. All right, roll, roll, come over here. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Anybody? Anybody other than me? Listen to that in middle school? All right. Easy peasy. We got that rolled up. Now, I'll take my twine, slide it underneath, a little wiggle wiggle action. Boom, wrap it, slide it. Tie it down. You know, you don't have to be a Boy Scout for this. You don't need a hefty square knot or a toe hitch. Okay, just a nice little bow, right? Keep it simple, guys. Gonna do another piece from this side. Same thing. Gonna wrap it, maybe do another. Right. I want this to stay together. Unlike many marriages in America. I'm going to do one more on this little skinny end here because I don't trust it. I have trust issues. Yep. I have trust issues. All right. One there. Another one right here. Uh, for anybody looking for the vegetarian option, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I don't, I don't know of anything to substitute for deliciousness like this. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that, by the way, of things that don't taste like other things, regardless of how hard you try. All right, now we're gonna go in with our jerk, right? We're gonna coat this bad boy really, really nicely on the outside. We're gonna coat it really, really nicely. Don't be scared. Don't be scared, everything's gonna be iry. All right. Oh, you better stay together. You better. 
Coating it on all sides because we're going to sear it on all sides. Alright. You can do this on the grill as well if you'd rather do it grilled. Uh, I still haven't gone and gotten propane. I know. I said I would. Told you I'm bad about that stuff. Alright. Got that bad boy coated up real nice. Got my oven set at 425 degrees because we're going to finish the job in the oven. You can also take this and uh, <clears throat> pop it back onto the refrigerator for a minute and let it cool because that will obviously tighten up the meat a little bit. A little snap back for you old heads out there. You know what I mean. All right. Let's get this bad boy in the cast iron. Get it seared off. All right, our pan is good and hot, smoking right there. I had it in the oven, it's cheating a little bit. So <clears throat> we're going to put just the slightest drizzle of uh, olive oil in here, just a little lubrication in my cast iron there. Just want to coat the bottom of this pan real nice. So we'll go with the pork to go in. And remember, jerk is like blackening seasoning, right? It, it needs some color. It needs the heat, man. All right, now I'm going to go. All right, sorry about that. Like I was saying, the jerk seasoning needs that heat. And we're going to go in with our uh, open little seal side part down first. We want to try to get that side sealed up. And that barely fits in the pan. <laughs> Outstanding. A little more oil. Don't mind me. Just trying to spread love. I'll let that go for a minute or so on that side, and then we'll get to turning this beast. Beautiful thing about cast iron is obviously once we get where we want at this point, we can pull this whole pan, slide that bad boy in the oven, and that is one less dish for your child or lover to have to wash later. Because we all know the rules. He or she that cooketh does not wash it. Everybody knows that. Everybody. Okay? If you didn't breed your prenup, that's that's your fault. That's your fault. Try to make sure I get that oil under there real nice. Spread out in that pan. Like I said, we're going to roll this bad boy over here in just a second. Sear it off on all sides. Oh, yeah. Wait right, so I flip this bad boy over. You will feel the rhythm. You will feel the ride. Come on, y'all. It's stuffed jerk pork time. It almost works. You get the point. It almost works. Okay. Now, when we go to the oven with this, um, it's actually not going to be in there as long as you might think. Like I said, I've got my oven set at uh, 425 currently. But remember that I, I, we cut this down, right? We rolled it out, and we may or may not have pounded it. But either way... It should not take as long as just a solid piece of muscle going into the oven. So I'm going to pop this bad boy in there uh, for a solid 12 minutes to start. And then we will come back and check it out. Okay. Now when we get to cooking uh, an actual baby pork loin, I'm going to go ahead and warn you now. We will not cook it well done. It does not have to be cooked well done. Um... But we'll, we'll delve into that a little bit later in life. Got some cool videos coming for you guys as well. I'm so sorry. I'm so slow putting these things out. I don't mean to be. But we've got quite a bit coming up. We may even do the lamb tacos. I've got to get some paperwork signed by some family so I'm not harmed later. We've got some soft shell crab coming. Uh, of course, as it cools down, we'll be doing all the awesome fall foods, man. 
you know. And if there's anything that you guys want to see, talk about, man, just let me know. This is this is my passion. This is what I love to do. <coughs> Anybody that I can share this world with, uh, I'm absolutely all about it. All right. So as you see, we've got it seared. It's got a nice crust on top there. Um, that comes from that sugar, right? That sugar caramelizes really, really nice for us. And I wish you guys could smell it. I mean, the flavor is going to be out of control. All right, we've got that bad boy done. I'm going to pop this into the oven. And uh, then we're going to get to working on our vegetables. All right. <clears throat> so the pork is out of the oven. We've got it set aside, uh, resting. Why is it resting? How does dead flesh rest? Well, remember, we've talked about this before. Whenever we cook meat, when the meat is done, you just got to give it time to relax, right? It, it becomes a little sensitive, if you will. And if you come in there all aggressive, trying to stab it and jab it, you're going to lose essential juices. And it's bordering on the lines of good and great, legendary, dare I say. If you jump in there too soon and go to hacking and chopping, you're going to lose a lot of those juices. You're going to have really dry meat that's not going to perform well um, you know it's going to give you you know that when you put it in your mouth and like sucks all the moisture out of your mouth it's probably because you, you chopped into it and it doesn't matter if it's a burger or thanksgiving turkey same rules apply give it a second all right be patient it's a ritual all right so we're going to get into slicing this bad boy up i'm going to warn you right now uh, that end i knew i couldn't trust that end i knew i couldn't trust you and it's my fault. I saw the signs, you know, the red flags were there. And I was like, no, but I can change it, but I couldn't. So a lot of my filling fell on that end, but that's okay, because we still got something in there. So we're gonna slice this bad boy up, show you what this thing looks like, get it plated up. You know, I have to call the uh, royal tester in and uh, see what he thinks, yeah? Okay, so here's that pork, right? Let's see if I can get you over. A little bit close, uh, that color on that, right? Like I said, jerk seasoning is like blackening. We want that color, man. We really want that caramelization. All right, now we're gonna cut this bad boy. And you can cut straight down medallions. You're not gonna be able to really, um, you know, cut this on a bias. Try to make it all fancy, but I want to be careful because that filling is still pretty hot. I probably should have went with two eggs as opposed to one to really lock that down but that is all right oh it's still so hot in there it's still so hot it's just oozing it's just oozing out so we got the basis of it so a little filling there in that pork and this has got a little heat on it like ours a little spicy. We're gonna push that aside. So we can play it up here. Let me get a wipe down. Let me get a wipe down. We burn through so many towels in this house. Uh, heavy on the laundry around these pots. Heavy on the laundry. All right. Throw that bad boy over there. Plate, plate. Boom. Coming in with our plate. Throw down our bed of rice and peas. With all due respect. Get out of there. Don't do this to me. We're recording. Alright, bed of rice and peas. Dead center. We're gonna go with our pork. A couple pieces of our cheesy spinach jerk pork on top that bad boy lay it down lay it down so they can see what they're getting it's a very brown plate right now right very brown coming with that relish of ours that's been chilling with our mango and our dragon fruit just right on top now this will add a little bit of sweetness. Remember, we put that honey in there, right? Honey in there as well. 
It'll add a little bit of sweetness. It'll help to cool your mouth just a hair. That looks like a hot pile of mush mess <laughs> from that angle. Because, um, well, you know, what it is, what it is. That's our jerk pork. Not the sexiest looking thing. But uh, let's see how it tastes, right? Because that's what really matters at the end of the day. Okay. Royal Tester is here. Oh my god, I didn't have my mic on that whole time. You realize that? Anyway, Royal Tester is here. I hope you can hear me. Um, let's see what he thinks. The pork is very, very good. And then... And the blend is good as well. Now the rice, let's see. It's also very delicious. So, that was our spinach stuffed jerk pork loin with rice and peas, a mango relish with some sauteed veggies that you guys didn't see. Don't worry about that. A little squash and zucchini, nothing fancy there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, honestly. Thank you guys for coming and checking this video out. I know there's a lot of things that you could be doing, a lot of people you could be watching. You chose to stop and party with us. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something. Life is short. Get out there. Try something new. Eat something. Tomorrow is not promised. All right, so eat dessert today. All right, guys. Thanks for coming on this kitchen adventure, and we will see you very soon.